Inflammatory bowel disease is an illness that affects children and adults. It's an illness that primarily involves the intestines and you have inflammation. So inflammation is uh, swelling. I think most people are familiar if they see inflammation on the skin. So swelling, red, sore, uh, and then when that happens in the intestines you can get all sorts of different problems. So there is a lot of research trying to figure out uh, why someone goes on to develop uh, Crohn's disease and also colitis. Um, I think in the past decade we have learned a lot about these conditions, um, but there's still much more we need to learn. And I still, when I meet with a family today with a new diagnosis of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, I can't tell them what the cause is. We know genetics is, in, is a key piece, so that if you have a family history of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, there's an increased risk in children. Um, but there's something else. And in the Maritimes, we have the dubious honor of having the highest rates of inflammatory bowel disease in the world. Um, and it's not clear exactly why that is. And likely, there's some environmental factor that we haven't identified uh, acting with somebody's genetic makeup uh, that results in somebody going on to develop Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So the symptoms really depend on where the inflammation is most. If we look at ulcerative colitis, uh, usually it's um, diarrhea that is bloody, cramps and pain around the time of bowel movements. Um, with Crohn's disease, if you have your inflammation in the large intestine or your colon, you could have similar symptoms. Uh, if the inflammation is more concentrated in the small intestine, it could be diarrhea that's not bloody, uh, weight loss, abdominal pain. Um, uh, it can impact their growth, so they can have, they can have fallen off in their height growth, lost weight, um, and then it can also, both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis um, can cause uh, symptoms outside of the intestine, so joint problems, skin rashes, mouth sores, inflammation in the eyes, and fevers. And often once we've calmed down the inflammation in the intestine, we can uh, improve those other symptoms if they're there. I think first of all people need to think about it and be aware of it and I would say that one of the things we struggle is that I think a number of um, people either aren't aware or just don't think that this is something that's likely to happen in a child or, or a teenager and they think this is more an adult uh, illness. Um, so first to think about it. Um, then based on the symptoms, uh, sometimes blood work can be helpful. So looking for signs of inflammation on blood tests. Um, uh, X-ray tests sometimes also can, can look for signs of irritation or inflammation in the intestines. And then what we do here is perform endoscopies or what's called or scope tests. We do these in the operating room under anesthetic um, and we look at uh, the esophagus, the stomach and about a foot into the small intestine. And then uh, uh, the other end throughout the large intestine and the end of the small intestine. So in 2011 there is no cure for inflammatory bowel disease. So when we make this diagnosis, that's a, it's a lifelong diagnosis. And often when we're making the diagnosis, the disease is active. And so one of the ways we, the initial part of treatment is getting active disease into remission. And then once the disease is in remission, it's keeping it in remission. Um, and so we, depending on the condition, so if it's Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, there are some variations as to what we use, but we can use medications, uh, medications you take by mouth, uh, some are intravenous medications or injectable medications, and if it's Crohn's disease, um, sometimes we don't even use any medication, we can use um, a liquid diet um, that's delivered by a, a nasal gastric tube, so a tube that, that um, goes down the back of the nose, uh, down the throat and into the stomach, and when we're getting the disease from active to inactive, it means for three months not eating and just having this liquid nutrition um, delivered, which uh, as you can imagine when we talk to families is um, it's a lot to digest, a lot to take in to hear that. Um, weighed against some, some of the other medications and their side effects, so it's balancing the pros and the cons. Um, families have options though, so there are different ways uh, and they, they need to choose what's right for them. We follow about 300 children and teenagers uh, with uh, inflammatory bowel disease. The majority of, of uh, in our uh, age range that we see, about uh, two-thirds have Crohn's disease, one-third have ulcerative colitis. 
peer support is important. So last year we started uh, a IBD teen group um, and that met over eight weeks uh, on Wednesday afternoon uh, after school and uh, we're looking to repeat that this year. Um, the difficulty is that it's, it works for people that are close to Halifax. It's more difficult if you're from away and because we do serve New Brunswick, PEI and Nova Scotia, we need to be aware of that. So we're looking at adjusting that this, we, uh, this year uh, and maybe doing um, an IBD day, uh, a Saturday where it could be available to uh, people from outside the Halifax area. Um, we're also, through a generous donation by the IWK Auxiliary, uh, working on a website uh, for uh, teens uh, with inflammatory bowel disease uh, to help them self-manage their condition, become more knowledgeable about their condition. But it also has a social um, uh, network component uh, built into that um, where they can establish that community. Here in the Division of Gastroenterology the IWK we are very active with research uh, so we have a number of different clinical trials where we're evaluating new medications. We're one of many sites uh, in uh, North America um, participating in, in these studies. Some of these are intravenous medications and some are, are not. Uh, we're also uh, looking at um, trying to better understand why uh, enteral nutrition, the liquid therapy that I spoke about uh, for the treatment of Crohn's disease, why that works. And so we're working with researchers in um, Toronto and in Philadelphia uh, to try and better understand what impact that has in the intestine. Our feeling is that um, it alters the gut bacteria. So we have, we all live with billions of bacteria. We actually have more bacterial cells in our body than we do human cells. Uh, so they're very important to us. And there's good evidence to say that by altering the balance between uh, certain bacteria that you can improve or decrease inflammation. And likewise, if it's altered the other way, you can make it worse. Uh, so perhaps that's how enteral nutrition works. So those are some examples of some of the studies that we're doing here.